It's possible that Professor Stephen Hawking passed away before the James Webb Space Telescope actually lifted off. Still, because of how big space is, the new space telescope will spend several hours verifying some of the late physicists' beliefs. One of these hypotheses is the final one Hawking worked on before he passed away, in which he debated a multiverse hypothesis that contends a parallel world once contained a precise replica of you. It is unusual for a single piece of scientific equipment to provide as much value, yet the JWST has already started doing so. Stephen Hawking's multiverse theory, which was disputed by many scientists, has now been verified. What is the multiverse theory proposed by Stephen Hawking? How does it make you feel? How is the theory eventually supported by the James Webb Space Telescope? You'll get to know this and plenty more as we dive into details. While it may not sound so terrifying, have you ever considered whether there are sentient beings in places other than planet Earth in the cosmos? What if there were multiple versions of you scattered throughout, well, the universe? That seems disturbing, but the hypothesis is supported by the late Professor Stephen Hawking, one of the most brilliant minds to have ever been involved in science. This means a form that behaves just like you would. He developed the multiverse theory, a theory that aims to explain why there might be copies of you that you aren't even aware of. If there are copies of you, then there are copies of everything you are aware of. For instance, a replica of this planet, this star or the entire Milky Way galaxy can exist somewhere else. However, in addition to these heavenly planets, your computer or car might also have duplicates. Who is creating all these duplicates and how many fake copies can there possibly be in the universe? As to the question of whether we are alone in the universe, Bill Watterson has the answer. He said, Sometimes I think the surest sign that intelligent life exists elsewhere in the universe is that none of it has tried to contact us. However, in all seriousness, the question has troubled humanity for as long as we have been conscious. Of course, that is a snarky, funny response based more on human behaviour than on cosmic truth. Aristotle weighed in in the 4th century BCE and claimed that a so-called plurality of worlds could not exist because every solar system required a prime mover to keep it going and could not imagine an infinite number of those, according to Michael J. Crow, the author of The Extraterrestrial Life Debate, 1750 to 1900. Epicurus asserted that there are an unlimited number of atoms and that there are infinite universes that are both similar to and dissimilar to our own at the same time that he published a surprisingly contemporary rebuttal to the Aristotelian viewpoint. Using the anthropic cosmological principle, cosmologists John D. Barrow and Frank J. Tipler argued that even in a universe filled with planets, creating life on one is challenging and that there is a significant evolutionary gap between single-celled organisms and large-brained mammals who are capable of engaging in cosmic discussion. The idea is unique since it was the last one the professor published. In fact, his last piece of original research was submitted for publication only 10 days before he passed away. Hawking presented a theory on the start of the universe in the work titled A Smooth Escape from Eternal Inflation, which he co-authored with Thomas Hertog, a physicist at the Catholic University of Leuven in Belgium. This theory may answer several unanswered problems. Even though it is his final piece of writing, the paper was essentially a final examination of one of his original theories. In fact, the scientists behind the JWST will likely be contenders for a Nobel Prize if it ultimately contributes to the discovery of the multiverse. Hawking would not be qualified to accept it though. What is the multiverse theory and what were the opinions of the late physicists on it? According to the multiverse theory, our universe, which has hundreds of billions of galaxies and virtually innumerable stars and spans tens of billions of light years, might not be the only one in the universe. Instead, a completely other universe might exist far away from hours and hours and hours. In fact, according to this mind-boggling theory, there may be an infinite number of universes, each with its own set of stars and galaxies, and perhaps even its own advanced civilizations. In other words, our universe might only be one of a far bigger and grander collection of realities called the multiverse. However, because the multiverse implies the existence of doppelgangers or replicas, some people will claim it makes things creepier. Several branches of physics and philosophy raise the idea of the multiverse, but the inflation theory provides the best illustration of it. According to the inflation theory, a hypothetical occurrence took place when our universe was incredibly young, less than a second old. 
The universe had a period of rapid expansion over the brief period, ballooning to a size that was several orders of magnitude larger than before. Though it is estimated that our universe's inflation ceased roughly 14 billion years ago. Some scientists claim that the existence of life, especially intelligent life capable of making cosmic observations, is the strongest piece of evidence for the multiverse. Some aspects of our universe, such as the longevity of stars, the abundance of carbon, the accessibility of light for photosynthesis, and the stability of complex nuclei, appear unique and essential for supporting life. But these characteristics are typically absent if you are given a randomly generated universe, according to this perspective. Hertog claims that Hawking was not content with his current level of comprehension of the multiverse and invited Talk to join him in an effort to manage the universe. The two then set out to devise a strategy for turning the notion of a multiverse into an orderly, verifiable scientific framework. The paradigm proposed in Hawking's final publication would make the multiverse finitely measurable and amenable to meaningful engagement with the aid of scientific methods. It is one thing to have an idea, but quite another to be able to back it up with evidence. The complexity of the multiverse idea makes it a difficult step to prove. Going back in time to re-evaluate several processes and events that took place before the universe as we know it began is necessary for the evidence. We refer to temporal periods of billions of years down to the Big Bang when we talk about gazing back, as we just discussed in this video. Where will scientists find the equipment necessary to perform this? JWST The mother of all telescopes, the James Webb Space Telescope enters a picture here after the Hubble Space Telescope. The JWST is the biggest space observatory ever constructed and is regarded as the Hubble Space Telescope's success. It boasts a large sunscreen the size of a tennis court, measuring a whopping 22 meters by 12 meters. The shield's purpose is to prevent heat from obstructing of the infrared camera's ability to operate. Despite being nearly twice as big as Hubble, the JWST weighs just about half as much, 6,500 kilograms. As compared to Hubble's 2.4 meter diameter plate, the JWST's gold-plated mirrors have a total diameter of 6.5 meters. The JWST will have an overall vision that is around 15 times wider than Hubble because of its bigger surface area. The 10 billion JWST's duties include studying the first light in the universe and the celestial objects that emerged soon after the Big Bang, looking into the formation and evolution of galaxies, studying the atmospheres of distant exoplanets, taking pictures of the planets in our own solar system, and searching for signs of dark matter. It's interesting to note that Hawking contributed to the creation of the eternal inflation theory, which gave rise to the concept of infinite parallel universes. But he admitted he had never been a fan of the multiverse. In an interview, he's quoted as saying, the usual theory of eternal inflation predicts that globally our universe is like an infinite fractal, with a mosaic of different pocket universes separated by an inflated ocean. The local laws of physics and chemistry can differ from one pocket universe to another, which together would form a multiverse. But I've never been a fan of the multiverse. If the scale of different universes in the multiverse is large or infinite, the theory can't be tested. In order to reconcile quantum physics with gravity and Einstein's theory of relativity, Hawking and Hertog turned to string theory. They developed a novel theory of eternal inflation that depends on a limit at the start of time. According to the theory, if we follow the history of the universe backward in time, we eventually reach the point of eternal inflation, where time as we know it becomes meaningless. The new theory predicts that a finite structure of universes will emerge from the Big Bang, starting at that boundary. If this hypothesis has been proven correct, it implies that other universes similar to our own may have formed at that time, and there may even have been prehistoric gravitational waves that correspond to the inflation of the universe. Elon Musk, the CEO of the space exploration business SpaceX, is another person who has ideas about parallel universes. Although it seems unlikely that we will discover aliens on the Red Planet, it is not surprising that he is a science nerd and that he is advocating for humanity to live permanently on Mars. In addition, Musk also has some intriguing ideas regarding the multiverse theory. He admitted that he believes we're all trapped in a matrix-like pseudo-experience in a podcast interview with Joe Rogan whom he occasionally hangs out with. The universe is 13.8 billion years old, 
So any civilizations that may have arisen throughout the universe have had ample opportunity to develop their technological know-how, according to Musk. He said, if we assume any improvement rate, then games will be indistinguishable from reality or civilization will end. It could only be one of the two. This means we are most likely in a simulation because we exist. He added, I think most likely this is just about probability. There are so many simulations that you might just as easily refer to them as reality of the multiverse. Musk believes that in comparison to the simulation itself, the substrate or whatever is driving the simulations is probably full. He based this on our knowledge of video games, which most gamers enjoy playing because they are more engaging than the outside world. Therefore, if we are in a simulation, we presumably have an interesting life that is different from the people running the game. The multiverse theory is still contested by many scientists who continue to reject it. Some scientists have expressed their concerns in public by claiming that it is wholly metaphysical. They assert that it is nothing more than an idea that has been circulated as a convenient method to explain some apparently large gaps in our existing theories. In this regard, it is utilized similarly to how mechanical philosophers of the 17th and 18th centuries, such as Isaac Newton, employed God. Additionally, they note that multiverse theory isn't a true theory. It doesn't actually come with a set of mathematical equations that are known and widely accepted, and can be used to compute and predict things. This indicates that, at least initially, there is no prospect of meaningfully interacting with empirical facts. Another claim is that until the theories can be neither confirmed nor disproven, they cannot even be tested. The multiverse is also criticized for not having the same standing as well-known, well-established scientific theories like relativity and quantum mechanics, which is something that multiverse theorists supposedly frequently brush over. This deceives the public into believing the beliefs to be established science, which must ultimately harm the public's impression and acceptance of its authority. Those who oppose the multiverse also assert that some of its proponents are eager to redefine what science is. They aim to abandon the scientific method and throw the need for proof firmly into the background while weakening the crucial link between theory and empirical reality. So as being a space geek, which you surely are, what is your take on this theory of the multiverse? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you.